Welcome everyone to our presentation, co-constructing patient-oriented research capacity in the BC Cancer Practice-Based Research Challenge. Uh, before starting, I would like to acknowledge with gratitude that here we are connecting uh, today with Christy and Peter um, in the traditional, ancestral, and ancestral territories of the Muskiam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish peoples. And well, my name is Maria, Maria Turgeon, and I work at BC Cancer as the coordinator of research and evaluation. And hi, everyone. I'm Christy Coldwell. I am uh, a senior advisor for transplant research advocacy at the Transplant Research Foundation of BC. And I am also a patient partner in various capacities, including being involved in the construction and the implementation of this webinar. And my name's Peter. I'm a cancer patient living in Vancouver, where I have received care at BC Cancer Agency over the last 10 years. And I've also helped out with BC Cancer Agency's annual research challenge since 2019. Thanks, Peter. And we will first provide you with some background information. Then Christy, Peter, and I will dive into how we work together to develop and implement a webinar to build patient-oriented research capacity among BC cancer clinicians. We will also share the results of the evaluation we conducted after the webinar and the lessons we learned. First of all, what is the BC Cancer Practice-Based Research Challenge? Uh, this is an annual, uh, annual program directed to frontline clinicians who have little or no research experience. The research challenge provides training, mentorship, and funding to help clinicians develop and conduct small research projects informed by their clinical practice. The research challenge is a tangible example of BC Cancer's ongoing commitment to continue advancing patient and family-centered care and since its very beginning, this program has sought to promote a patient-oriented research approach to ensure that patients' preferences, needs, and priorities are incorporated in all aspects of the program. Peter, you were our first patient partner. Could you tell us more about how the engagement of patient and family partners in the research challenge has changed over time? Uh, most certainly, Maria, thank you. Um, from my perspective, over this time, from 2019 to 2021, 2022, I've witnessed the inclusion of patients as partners in research as starting as a concept being introduced to, um, to this concept being more formalized and ingrained in the mechanics of how the, the staging of the research challenge occurs. Um, the increase in patients directly involved from, as, as the graphic shows, uh, from one in 2019 to about 13 in 2021 is uh, for sure an indication of success in the concept taking hold. But having said that, uh, <clears throat> the increased participation is a result of expressly creating the, the environment for this to succeed. And by that, what I mean is um, BC Cancer Agency has developed in-house training and onboarding sessions for both patients and clinicians to understand the relevance and benefits of patient engagement. So overall, I just feel that the, the patient engagement aspect in the research challenge has changed from a, a nice to have aspect or something that should be considered to now becoming very much an expected component of a practice research project. Thanks so much, Peter. So clinicians from across British Columbia participate in the research challenge. Back in 2019, we had in-person workshops hosted at BC Cancer Vancouver. But clinicians from other places around the province, from Victoria, Kelowna, Fraser Valley, and Prince George, connected by video conference from a meeting room. The experience was definitely not equitable due to the quality of the connection, sometimes very poor quality of video, and sound, and because it's just different having the structures right there in the flesh versus as a small figure on a screen. The pandemic context and restrictions for in-person gatherings pushed us to make better use of communication technologies, and so we entered the era of Zoom. But this wasn't only a technological leap 
it was also an opportunity to improve the content of the training and the strategies we were using to deliver this content. In 2020 and 2021, DC Cancer collaborated with the BC Support Unit, patient family partners and academic partners from the University of British Columbia, the University of Northern British Columbia, to improve the research methods workshops and more intentionally build patient-oriented research capacity among research challenge trainees. We work together to embed poor content into an asynchronous online research methods course and a synchronous interactive webinar. So basically, we decided to have online modules that clinicians could complete at their own pace. And then the content of those modules came truly alive through a real-time webinar that encouraged reflection and interaction. Planning the webinar involved two simultaneous areas of work. First, we embedded POR principles by actively engaging experienced patient and family partners as co-facilitators. Second, we held planning meetings with academic and BC support unit collaborators to, the, uh, to define feasible objectives and content. After thoughtful discussion, we decided that the webinar should focus on helping clinicians too gain confidence to discuss research strategies with their mentors, identify the importance of a stakeholder engagement, and to reflect on the benefits and engage, of engaging patients as research partners. Christian, Peter, um, could, could you tell us more of how did we embed poor principles in the webinar? Um, for sure. Thanks, Maria. Um, so I really feel that this webinar was a perfect example of um, walking the walk, not just talking the talk. Um, because really, this was a webinar that was in large part focused on poor, around meaningful and effective engagement of patient and family partners in practice-based research projects. And so what better way to do that than by also <coughs> inviting patient and family partners to serve as co-facilitators, helping to deliver the material, as well as share their experiential knowledge. But we did recognize that we couldn't just throw them into this and hope for the best um, in this new role, one that they were likely not overly familiar with. So it was recognized that we needed to provide additional training, um, support and onboarding to ensure that they felt confident and comfortable in this role. And Peter, I'd love to hear a little bit more about what all of that entailed and your thoughts on this. Uh, thanks, Christy. Uh, excellent point to make. Um, from my point of view, um, I just feel that the fact that we decided to bring in people and an organization who could speak on past experiences of patient-oriented research was a, a very most effective way of uh, embedding the POR principles in the webinar. Um, so what I'm trying to say is instead of presenting vast amounts of theoretical information, uh, we presented real-world experiences. Uh, which I think helped uh, just accelerate the process. Um, so as mentioned, for example, we recruited local experienced patient family partners. This allowed the researchers to learn of real world examples of patient engagement of other research projects and not necessarily coming from BC Cancer Agency, but uh, from other health healthcare organizations in British Columbia. The, these experienced patient family partners uh, prove that they were able to speak about lessons learned, uh, shortcomings, success stories of their in previous engagements. So it was a, a quick way to open the eyes for the, for the clinicians and clinician researchers. In addition, uh, through the help of BC Support Unit, uh, an onboarding process was developed whereby the patient family partners and their roles, in this case, as training code facilitators were explained and established. Thank you so much, Peter. So during the webinar, we used breakout rooms to facilitate small group discussions. We assigned two to three teams to each breakout room and each of these rooms had a research expert and one or two patient partners that facilitated the discussion. And we structured the webinar in two parts. In part one, we were focusing on helping the teams improve their research question. And in part two is really where the magic happened, where we 
address the relevance of engaging stakeholders and particularly patient and family partners throughout the different stages of the research process. So Peter, sorry, I'm asking you again for some help here. Um, could you give us more details about the structure and <clears throat> dynamic of the small group discussion? Uh, certainly, Maria, can do. Um, I think it was felt that given the number of people that were attending and just the fact that uh, this group of people, the, the clinician researchers were learning new concepts, um, you know, they were new to conducting research projects. So I think uh, what we wanted to ensure was that an online discussion was not dominated by one or two speakers or topics. Um, so therefore, we, we created the breakout rooms where time and attention could be dedicated uh, and more devoted to just a smaller number of people. And this, re this worked really well uh, just because it resulted in a, a more intimate setting, if you will, where the questions and ideas uh, could be elabor elaborated on and they were comfortably brought up and shared. And the, it just seemed like a, a more uh, conducive environment for the clinician researchers to ask all their questions, which there were many of. Thank you so much, uh, Peter, for that great description. So how did things go? An evaluation if it is everything, no? And overall, the research challenge trainees, the clinicians that participated in the, in the webinar, had a positive and valuable experience throughout this webinar. The majority agreed that the subject matter was presented effectively. And also the majority agreed that they plan to apply the learnings from the webinar. And in fact, they are right now applying that learning. And the clinicians really valued the breakout sessions to obtain feedback from patient family partners and the option to follow up with patient family partners to discuss how to apply poor principles to their individual projects. And now Christy will give you some details of the other side of the coin. So how things went for the patient partners that work with us. Hey, thanks, Maria. So I, I think this is the case with any sort of engagement activity where patient and family partners are involved, that it's really critical that that evaluation piece extends to include them. Um, so this is important for a couple, of, a couple of reasons. So first, it helps to really close that loop, ensure there's no outstanding items or loose ends, so to speak. And it also provides the patient family partners, um, in this case, the, the patient family partner facilitators, the opportunity to really reflect on their roles, their learnings, and also share their experiences um, in any potential areas where they found that there could be um, improvement for future workshops. And that is a really important piece. Um, additionally, I am happy to say that uh, they all really felt that this was a worthwhile and good use of their time and energy. Um, they would most likely do it again, um, but it did raise some important questions, particularly, they did raise important questions, particularly around how the clinicians that attended would actually be using the new learning that they had acquired. That was a really important one for them. Thank you so much, Christy. So to end this presentation, we would like to share um, some of the lessons we learned after pl uh, planning and implementing this webinar. First, dedicated time is needed to onboard patient family partners and co-construct the educational experience. Second, patient family partners should receive an honorarium for the time committed to sharing their lived experience. They are the experts, they are really guiding us through uh, this whole process and what they have learned in that process. So therefore, people like me uh, doing this kind of program should budget from the very beginning for appropriate expenditures. Um, also different resources, including the handouts and video recorded material are not available for future trainees, instructors, patient family partners, and other users. So this, the time we invested in this and the energy is really an investment for the future. And we consider that the learnings of the approach used to develop the webinar could be applied to incorporate poor principles to other practice-based research educational activities, such as training on research ethics and research budget. And 
Before really closing, Christian Peter, what would you say is your most important takeaway from this experience? Um, so I would say that for me, it was this was a really good example um, of just that there are many other op that there are many opportunities in which patient family partners can be involved in practice based research. Um, this is an opportunity where they can be involved in helping to co create and deliver the material so by serving as co facilitators it's just another opportunity and role that they are able to <laughs> fill and bring their lived experience. And Peter, I wonder what your thoughts are. Uh, that's interesting to hear yours, Christy. Um, myself, I was thinking more, um, I mean, we've been explaining and dwelling on how the, 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 the research challenge has expanded and uh, just gaining more capacity at BC Cancer Agency. But uh, what I would like to point out, and I guess my takeaway uh, point is from the experiences that the expanding capabilities have all occurred in very challenging times. Um, I just think with the arrival of COVID-19 and all the pressures and uncertainties that it brought to everyone's uh, lives, in particular healthcare workers and clinicians and uh, um, all people like that involved, um, it could have been easy for decision makers or stakeholders and participants to, to pause uh, the research challenge. However, the commitment to to both run the research challenge and participate in the research challenge uh, never really changed. Despite the, so the challenging times, uh, the running of the research challenge was not deterred. And in fact, the, its capacities and presence um, are larger than ever. Thank Which you bodes, so much. Uh... And, and bodes well for the future uh, research challenges. Yeah, thank you, Peter. And just in case you want to contact us and learn more about the project and uh, about engaging patients at BC Cancer, here are some contact information. And now we are open for questions. Thank you.